All right. Um, yeah, so I finally recovered from dying. <laughs> uh, that painful death of self-pity and, and depression. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I went to my psychiatrist, got myself back together, and rearranged my, my stats a bit when I was there. Um, so here's here's what happened um, after I got out of the uh, my my psychiatrist's uh, office. I got uh, less intelligent. <laughs> I I've became more uh, psych. I don't know what this is. Sensitivity of how emotion intelligence here. There you go. I got better EI. Um, let's see EQ. I think right. Uh, physique. Uh, I don't know how strong I was before, but I worked out a little bit, so I'm at two now. Um, and then a little bit better at my uh, motor skills. So, <laughs> it's the new me. It's a new day. It's a new me. Okay. So, uh, what else? What else should I, should I do? Um, I gotta select my signature skill, right? This will gain a plus one bonus. Additionally, the learning cap for every skill of the same type will be raised by one. So, I'm gonna focus on psych for this run, um, but a little bit more balanced than the other ones. So, the reason why I lost was. I had bad psych, I think. That's my conclusion. I had, I was really intelligent, but that kid just destroyed me with my lack of psych skills. So, um, we're coming back stronger. Uh, I forgot what these do. What is this? Oh, oh yes. Okay. So volition. Hold yourself together. Keep your morale up. <laughs> so I had terrible volition, and this is what what killed me. I'm pretty sure. Uh, hunches, gut feelings, dreams. Yep. Empathy. Understand others. Oh, not bad. Authority. Intimidate the public. Assert yourself. Ooh, ooh! I could be a boss. Do I want to be a boss? Connect to Station Four. Understand cop culture. <laughs> Suggestion: Charm men and women. Play the puppet master. Wow, that's that sounds fun too. Um, Hand-eye coordination, perception, reaction speed. You know what? Um, I'm gonna go with. Either empathy or authority. I think I'll go authority. Yeah, I'm gonna make a stand. All right, confirm. Yeah, this is gonna be a, a I'm the boss type of playthrough. So let's see how it goes. The furies are at home in the mirror. It is their dress. Even the clearest water, if deep enough, can drown. Ooh, I hope the game sounds okay. I know the last time it was a little bit quiet. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna check it. I should check that first. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Uh, I raised up the game volume a little bit, so it's. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it, no larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. Um, we are very af assertive of ourselves. So. Never, ever, ever, baby. No, we don't want to keep on non existing. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex wives are contained within it. I think. Now that I've played this once, this is our um, hangover brain, basically. <laughs> We're in pain, aren't we? This is great. Give me some more. This is great. Yes, it is. It is. What about the X something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic source. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. Okay, our limbic system's awakening. <laughs> Plunge back? No, 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 no. Let's keep Ex pushing. Extenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of the Zone. 
Hmm. No, 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 no. We're going. We want the burning light. Do you really? I do. Let me go. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself. Got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Yeah, I actually don't know why I'm drunk. Fear and apprehension. You should ask us out there first. Nice. It was apparently as easy. And we rolled success. Wait, I did this to myself? I hit myself? Tell me what's waiting for me. I don't care, I'm an idiot. A brave idiot. No, no, no. We're, we're uh, authoritative. There's this giant ball there. An evil ape. And the evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. Basically explaining that humans are basically killing each other and fighting each other on Earth. How big is the law? How small are the apes? Infinitesimally small. Okay, how big is the you ball? You can't even make out it's a ball when you're joking it out. It's that large. And this duking it out, I keep hearing about. What's that? Fine for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. Damn. That sounds like something I do. Let's go. Oh, that's sad. Yes, it is. And you drowned in that sadness a long time ago. Is that why I was so drunk? You lost. <gasps> My goodness, I'm ugly. <laughs> I gotta wear some clothes. Alright, so, oh my god, let's uh, <laughs> let's get some clothes, eh? Go, go, go. Oh my god, I'm still waking up. I'm slapping my face. Good. Take it. Nice. Take this. Nice. All you right. hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. <gasps> I got keys in my it pants. It says, whirling in rags. On the aluminium key ring there is a single key on the ring the number one is etched on it it should open the door okay so it's uh door number one is what we can open all right i'm so slow oh my god get this the magnum sized bottle of commodore red is empty Wait, what do my buttons do oh yeah i can press tab to see what i can get Okay, I got an empty cassette tape. This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. Look at all this reel tape all over the floor. Eh? Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. Man, did I really hate that song? Uh, there's a shoe, green shoe. Only the left one's on. Very nice, very nice. Oh, I can examine the glass. Forgot about that. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Alright, so I can look out or I can do visual calculus, 72%. Uh, I can always retry it because it's a white check. Okay, so let's do it. Let's go. The shards nice. face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Oh, yeah, I remember this. I think it's my shoe. <laughs> I think I threw a my shoe outside. The web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely this? a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Hmm. Even though my intelligence isn't as high, I still pass these things. Good. Wait, what am I doing? Assess the size of the impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. Okay. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. 
That's right. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. All right. Uh, I should go and get that shoe. The cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Nice. I got some experience and stuff. Wait, what are my items? Okay. What about this? Find your other shoe. Okay. That's my quest. All right. How do I? Oh yeah. Interact with the fan. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan. The other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Oh my god, was I trying to commit suicide? Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. <laughs> Alright, uh, I've done, I remember this. So if you pull on the light bulb, you get blinded and your your brain screams at you like why did you do that you idiot if you pull on the fan first sorry if you try to grab the tie right now uh you most likely hit your hand and, and injure yourself but if you pull on the fan the blades come squeaking to a halt it should be easier to reach the tie now and now we can grab the tie with a higher chance you reach out to <laughs> grab the tie oh my God. but what's this diffuse radiating chest pain doom comes over what? Come on. That was like so easy. I failed. Wait, what did I roll? A three? Oh, man. This is bad. Feels like sharp stones grinding in your chest and keeping you from moving. My goodness. For quite a long time. Am I having a heart attack? Still ongoing. <laughs> now is a good time to start worrying. Do you just Finally, lose? The pressure oh. recedes. You find yourself covered in cold sweat and trying not to move, hoping it will keep you from dying. Oh my god. So I, I recovered my health back, which is good. Oh no, I had to use this, didn't I? Didn't I have a health thing charge? I don't know. I'm not, I'm just leaving. So I think so what white checks do is like it's saying you can retry, right? But I need to spend points in Savoir Fair to be able to retry it. All right. Oh, let's grab this. It's a shirt. Nice. Uh, what do these items do? Let's see. So, minus in suggestion, but plus one in conceptualization. I see. Uh, this one is not plus one. Oh, plus one SD core, minus one savoir faire. This does give me nothing and a key to my room. All right. Let's continue. Go, go, go. Look in the mirror again. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a first discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Mm. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Oh, I just realized my portrait right now on the bottom left. Uh, yeah, you can actually. <laughs> you, you don't know what you look like, that's why it's like that. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really? Nothing? Really. All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in, has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. Well, I don't want to see this face all game, so I'm going to wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror, Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. <laughs> you could give up and just leave, or you can still wipe the mirror. I'm gonna do it. Behold. Damn. <laughs> you have no idea who this thing is, do you? Dear Lord, help me. What is this? Of course I do. It's it's some kind of superstar. I think I'm a superstar. This is the face of a late stage alcoholic can be very like honest with myself too late you clearly have rigor mortis on your face oh wait is that an expression <laughs> are you trying to make an expression with that face why i have no idea why it's there it just is please stop <laughs> it's horrible you're scaring yourself no 
Keep making the face. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. If this is my neutral face, that is kind of creepy. Like, whoever I talk to is going to feel scared. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Um, let's see. So, it's an expression of pain. It's too dark. Superstardom. That's too too high. Oh, I don't know. It's indescribable. That's that's good. I think it's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. I think I did that last time. He made fun of me. I'm insinu insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off too in a sad has been kind of way. There's some charm to it. That sounds interesting. Let's do that. There might have been <laughs> ten years ago. It's little more than a cadaverous spasm now. Okay, so I have two options. There's formidable. Oh my god, the chance is low. And then there's this one, which is impossible. <laughs> Attempt to stop the expression. It's three percent chance. This one um, is dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. Yeah, there's. I can't pass these. <laughs> it's just. Like, I'll try once. I'll try because it's a white check. Like the rest okay. of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. All right. Sounds good. So I can put points into Encyclopedia to try again. But yeah, that's, just, that's actually interesting. I never actually came back to this place before. So that's oh, locked. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Can I run faster, please? Oh, I can zoom out. Wow. I didn't know that. Can I how far can I zoom in? Oh, this is the farthest. Let's go outside. Oh, I can walk a bit faster now. Okay, okay. Uh There's a radio. Ah, there's some coins. It's going to take all the money. Nice, nice. Let's go outside. Get our shoe back. Okay, cool. Oh, I'm thinking something. The smell of the sea makes you dizzy. Oh, there's my shoe. Ah. A gust of briny wind washes over you. Thank you. Yeah, take my shoe. Awesome. There they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet. Nice. Like two baby crocodiles. <laughs> How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. <gasps> Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now. Truth be told. So if I needed it, I could have healed my morale with the shoe. Man, maybe I should have saved it if I knew. Like if somebody damages your morale, you come back to get your shoe, you save it for that one morale boost. <laughs> I'm sure if you play this game for a long time, you'd know that. Okay, so now I have composure and less savoir faire. My savoir faire is terrible. What is this again? Stun with immense pen. I sneak under the roses. What? Is there a better description here? Where's Savoir Fair? Here it is. Uh, nope. It's the same description. Wait, info. <gasps> Savoir Fair urges you to be better than you are. It urges you to be disco, slipped by others, and cool for acrobats, thieves, and bearable shaws. It enables you to move with silent footsteps, to groove to a good beat. Ah, it just makes you cool. That's what that is. Like, you know, people who naturally kind of like have good posture and movements and stuff. Like, I guess that's what that means. Calendar is March, years 51. Hello, officer. It's the women. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. Turn your bloated fa face away from her beauty and just keep on walking. Uh, no. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. 
Wait, I'm a businessman, chief executive officer, right? No, I know. Then why did you call me an officer? Because you're a police officer, sir. Good. Are you sure? You're shitting me. God damn, I'm a policeman. Don't you forget it. <laughs> That's so forceful. Okay, cool. I won't. <laughs> she means it. She wouldn't defy authority, however sweaty and bloated it may look. Oh, she actually meant that. No need to be alarmed. I was just getting into character, you know? Good. Now, how did you know I was a police officer? Uh, okay, so we went forceful, and then we go... Okay. Easy. Okay. How did you know I'm police... Oh, okay, it's the same thing. Sir, you've been here for three days on official police business, as you put it. What business is that? I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Damn, this is a 42%? Oh, it's cause, because I did goddamn right, I'm a policeman. I have this. Try the expression on her and let her know you want her physical. Oh my god, okay. That is crazy. Why don't I remember being a cop or anything else? Who in their right mind would let me be an officer of the law? And then this crazy one. Wow. If you, this, is, this is so crazy. Um, okay, let's, let's uh, slowly go through these. Why don't I remember being a cop? Could it be because of the drinking? Mm, maybe. Who in their right mind would let me be an officer of the Don't law? Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. Damn, that hurts. A glib remark. Don't let it stand. Assert yourself. Actually, I can see why they wouldn't trust me with the lie. I have the right character. Damn. A fondness for contradictory statements? Uh, no, I had thrown my shoe out the window. I deduced this from the direction of the shards. <laughs> yes, what you just said. I can't come up with anything. No. Extraordinary. Yeah, you better. Okay, let's try this challenge and see what happens. The words have already left your mouth. <laughs> I failed, and now I have to say, I want to have fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? It's <sighs> not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on. Say it again. Oh my god. I said I want to have sex with you. You can fix your grammar or you can say, no, I don't want to. You know what? She's kind of mean. No, I don't Come want on, to. Come on, man. Freddy, please. One more time. Don't back down now. Say what you said again. Proudly. Wow. Okay, we're just doing this for the fun of it now. I said I want to have fuck with you. <laughs> Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. What kind of cop are you? Uh, I'm a cop of the apocalypse. Superstar cop. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. You're pretty, I'm sorry. I'm the sorry cop. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm a cop at all. I sure don't remember being one. I think I might have lied. Hmm, superstar or cop of the apocalypse? Damn, that sounds cool. Has the time come already? Yes, we are mere minutes away from the total collapse of reality. Cops walking around with no memory of who they are saying what I just said. The end can't be more than two days away. No, we still have some centuries to go. Yeah, we're, we're minutes away from total destruction. Mere minutes. I should go and prepare then. Thank you. This has been delightful. I hope it does all come crashing down. Otherwise, it's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. Okay, bye. And for the record, no, I didn't do it. Didn't do what? <gasps> Looks like she left a nice long stub. It's still smoking. She that yeah. She was like, I don't want to deal with this guy, and didn't finish her smoke. All right, what's here? This is the weekend edition. Trump de monde. Okay. Okay. There's the door. Oh yeah, she's probably locked herself. The door is closed. The door is closed. Try the handle. This door can only be opened with the key <laughs> My or from the inside. I'm like, oh, trying to like break the door handle or something. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. Wow, hearing? Oh, perception, I see. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. I'm so alone. Why are you doing this? Don't do this to me. Beauty, don't abandon me in all this ugliness. Swallow the emotion. The door be is bed. closed. Yeah, you leave. You are an independent, authoritative badass.
Now we go downstairs. All right. Nice. We made it. All right, let's go. Speakers connect to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. No, I want this mic. Ah, I have to be on the front. Come on, a big old karaoke mic. How about you? This is where the lyrics would be. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. <laughs> My soul's cubic container is obscured by the hangover. My soul is immense. Yeah, because I'm Utterly. badass. And it needs to be heard. Yes. Through a PA system. Yes. By other people. Yes. What should I you sing? You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Thought it was obvious. Maybe I was thinking maybe I could sing something happy. No, no. <laughs> Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Sing the sad song. It's profound. Oh my god, you stupid inline empire. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs is destroyed. Alright. I never got to doing karaoke here. So, I will. I will. I could talk to you, but you're an asshole, I remember. Water coolant. What's this? <gasps> oh! Oh, it's a healing item. Wait, did I just use it? I did. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just wasted it. What if I needed a healing item? I just wasted it. Damn it. Uh, the soft purr of an electric juicer. Someone's working. The door's bolted. Kitchen reserved for personnel until 3. Or 13, I mean. Which is 1, 1 p.m. The sign reads, Mess Hall reserved for union members. Doors open at 4 p.m. Let's play a game. Royal pinball machines unplugged. Hey, let's talk to you. Hey, Hello, sweetie. sweetie. Oh. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. Okay. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to talk to you eventually. So, just let me explore, please. Yep. I want my freedom. There we go. All right. Uh, what's this? Bottle of rum. Okay. All right. Let's talk to you. Man is sleeping. Okay. On the counter rolled out of his open hand. You see a blister pack of headache medicine. <sighs> hey, this is challenging. Wake him up. Physical. This is a white check. Physical instrument. Or pick up the pills. Let's pick the up the man pills. Does not mind. Yes. You probably need them more than he does. Okay, so we got a healing item. I saw this going up. Okay, wake him up. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room. Damn, he's knocked out. All right, peace. Okay, let's uh, let's talk to the asshole. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now, he's purposely ignoring you. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a badass. So let's see. Something tells me you don't like me. Or look at the stuffed bird. Are you a bartender? Something tells me you don't like me. Oh no, you're a hero, a real hero. Stupid sarcastic Garte. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? So not only, only am I a cop, but I'm also a hero. Yes, you are a real. Decorated hero. What did I do? What did you not do? First you took the body down, then you solved the murder, then you didn't trash my hostel room. Maybe you even negotiated the strike. <laughs> oh my god. I'm guessing I didn't do any of those things. I do not appreciate your tone. Oh, it's not? He raises his shoulders like about to say something more, but then gets a hold of himself. You're right. It's not. Yeah, you better. He has no yes. respect for you personally. But this man sees himself as a law-abiding citizen, and you a representative of that law. He tries to avoid outright conflict. That's nice. I'm glad. Look at the stuffed bird. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. 
Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. Okay. Something about it makes you feel bitter. What happened to the bird? Look, your buddy is over there. Yeah. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? Again with that insubordinate don't She pretends not to hear you. Concentrating oh, on the bird instead. Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. Fine. He's very animated all of a sudden. This seems like a touchy subject. You look like a bartender. That period of my life is over. Not everyone who stands behind a counter is a bartender, okay? I'm the cafeteria manager. Okay, I'm tired of this guy. Come mm -hmm. on. Yeah. See ya. Oh my god. Sarcastic person. Alright. Hey, bro. A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Mm -hmm. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. Wow, you are a... sure of this, but why? Such a great man. Hold on, who is he to me? Shake his hand, don't shake his hand. Hold on, no, shake his hand. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. What's my name? This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. <sighs> Conceptualize. I'm going to invent a name for myself. Concentration <gasps> it makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath you're two steps closer to it but there are still many to go oh so i still don't have a name it is not yet time okay then <laughs> he has no idea what that means it looks like we had a little scheduling error on sunday saturday too actually have you had time to talk to the manager here yeah i just talked to him if you don't mind we should talk to him again Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Interviews? No, I haven't. Okay. We'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Oh my god. Dead body? Look, man, you know. Yeah. No. So... The body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. That's true, that's true. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Mm -hmm. uh, what if I told you I'm not really a police officer? How can you be so sure I'm for the police? But I can't remember anything. What were we supposed to do again? That's good. I can't remember it. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse. Much worse. Wow, I am not the worst. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. Hmm. What was it supposed to do again? What I don't know. How can you be so sure I'm from the police? What if I told you I'm not really a police officer? Let's get up to you, officer. If yep. you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? Wait, I don't have a badge. You mean you don't have a badge? Uh, I have my badge. I'm a policeman. I have my badge. Pretend you found it. I was on me. I'm really honest. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Okay, we're gonna lower the body as soon as we can, mister. Don't worry. Alright, so what are our quests? So many things. Interview, inspect, body, and report the badge. Let's go. Excuse me, sir. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart, right? 
You run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41. <laughs> the Harbinger of Ruin. What is gold and orange like a forest but smells like liquor? <laughs> I'm currently in between names. Yeah, this one. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no man, help me out. What is or a golden orange and smells like liquor? It's you. It's obviously you. You smell like liquor. <laughs> and you're orange. Oh my god. See? Everyone agrees it's your <laughs> color scheme. We're on the right track with this name thing. Okay. Is this what you get when you call the police now? We've been waiting for a week here. Sir, I understand your concern. But we are here to do a job. And for us to do it, I need you to stay calm. Yes, of course. Kim's awesome. For a moment, the cafeteria manager fidgets under the lieutenant's gaze. Then he gives in. Oh, my authority. I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene, but it also took you a while to call us. It was you who placed the call, correct? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Sylvie. She's a sus suspicious one. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. Okay. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. Yes? I have everything. You? Oh, you mean, do I have questions? Ask them. No, I'm good. I see. Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police officer would? My god, I hate this guy. Where exactly is the body? Who killed him? Why did Sylvie go away? You know, I actually can't think of a single thing. Um, Why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. What a douchebag. Extra fine. That's all. Let's go. Not cool. so fast. You owe me 130 real. Low chance. I don't owe you shit. What's real? Oh, excuse me. You owe me a hundred and thirty real. <laughs> real. The IIR, or Interisolary Real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Okay, I owe you money. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right, money. You owe this establishment a hundred and thirty real. <laughs> but what exactly is money? You're under arrest. <laughs> what do I owe this place Let's for? Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Damn. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. <laughs> Actually, more, but... We'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachon. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. But what exactly is money? What are you, a philosopher? <laughs> Since I woke up, I have trouble remembering even the most basic concepts of reality. No, I'm just getting my bearings, man. Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room or... Or eight bottles of potent blend and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Hmm. How about I show him my coins? Yes, it is. That's ten plus twenty plus equals forty. I'm now down to ninety, right? No, you see, that's forty cents. <laughs> oh my god. Cents are a form of currency one hundred times smaller than the real. Ah. I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have 130 real. Hey, I lost 40. You're gonna give it back? He said take. He's not gonna take it. 
One hundred times smaller? Okay. The cafeteria <laughs> manager stands silently, looking at the coppers on the counter before him. Isn't it evil? The order of magnitude between what is asked of a person and what they have. Oh my god. Darkness rides. Pick up the coins. Keep it to yourself and pick up the coins. Darkness rides. That's so funny. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. That's cop four. I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. <laughs> oh, what happens now? I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Officer, maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Isn't there somewhere I can stay around here? I don't have a home. I don't remember where my home is. I don't remember what my home is. Officer, you really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Call them. Ask for assistance. We have to get this investigation started now. Mm -hmm. Good luck. All right, so we got to pay for the damages too. Man. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. I really don't remember. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Near? South, maybe? You don't really know, do you? I don't. I only have a vague blackened image. A vague blackened image doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. <laughs> I don't want to be a hobo cop. You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. Okay. So, what is this? Lonesome, long way home. It's like a, there's a problem of where my home is. And I don't have the solution. Okay. Um, it gives you a one encyclopedia. Factual memory returns. What's six hours and five minutes mean? Huh. No idea. All right, then. Um, let's go outside, Kim. So we have to now look at the dead body. Remove the dead body. That's what. All right. So first of all, we re we uh what? What done? Okay. Yeah. I was like, I interviewed the cafeteria manager. Where did it go? Okay. So good. Um, we're gonna inspect the the body because that's Kim said that's very important. So we're gonna do that. Let me just look at stuff. Heap of snow. Okay, what about this? A heap of what? The, the, the sign reads, fuck the police. Oh my god, we're enemies here. What is this car doing? Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Damn, that's a cool looking car, actually. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. Oh, this is Kim's car. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. <laughs> okay, well, maybe we'll come back. Um, no, I'll just In the cabin, the you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Oh, so this is where I kind of report my missing badge and stuff like that, so... Uh, pull out the pull-out toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Ooh, can I get one? Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. <laughs> He's clearly a little protective of his <laughs> tools. But what can you do? Work is work. Okay, so we have chain cutters. We have a flashlight and red tip pry bar. Let's get chain cutters first. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, though the cutters in your oh, hand. We can get everything. We can get a pry bar. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier than you'd think. Good. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. That's good. That's good. And then the flashlight. It's robust, weatherproof, and well-made. 
police issue blue nice lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise <laughs> miss yeah yeah good pushing pull out toolbox slides back into its nest preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook <laughs> run your fingers over one of the steering levers the white suede feels luxurious under the touch and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm mm, familiar that means I know how to drive this thing, right? Tap on the fuel preheater gauge. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch labeled heat. Oh, it's like uh, you got to warm up the engine kind of uh, an engine. <laughs> There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Yeah, um, I wasn't going to... We're not going <laughs> anywhere right now. Yeah, I knew that's what he meant too. <laughs> Alternative translation. Don't even think you can drive my MC. <laughs> Alright, what are we looking at? This is the Coupris Kinema, my motor carriage. You can use the toolbox and the radio if you'd like. Motor carriage, motor carriage. Something bad with a motor carriage. A dark lump rises in your throat. Hmm, I have a bad memory about this. Why? Why do I feel that way? Can I turn it on and drive somewhere? This must be what woke me up when you arrived in Martinez, the infernal noise. Oh, this is the noise. When I woke up, do all policemen, the RCM, have such cool motor carriages? Okay, what, first of all, what is nothing, this? Nothing. It's probably nothing. <laughs> Forget I brought it up. Please proceed with the carefree lollygagging. Oh, come on, man. Can we, no, he already said no. This must be what woke me up. Yes, sorry about that. The Kupris Kinema does have a rather distinctive engine sound. Mm, good to know, actually. He says it with very badly concealed pride. <laughs> He's actually proud of the noise. That's so funny. Do all policemen have such cool motor carriages? The Kupris motorcar does provide most of our patrol vehicles, yes. Okay. Oh, I'll just ask him. No, I'm afraid not. We have a murder case on our hands, remember? I thought so. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook. I put the frequency tabler lights up, and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. Okay. The soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. Okay. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. Okay. Come in, dispatch. Come in, dispatch. Come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker copy. Hi, Alice. This is Officer. Yeah, just. This no. is Officer Alice Demetri, precinct 57. How may I assist you? Could you connect me to the 41st precinct? I have something I need to report. I need you to connect me to a civilian. She may have reported a murder. Uh, let's do the badge thing first. Just a second, officer. Okay. 10 to 10 five. This is 41st. Uh, come in. Over. I love their French accent. It's so cool. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. Wait, wait, wait. This is uh, not just voice radio. This is, uh, you can see them, right? Scrawny old man sits, right? So he can, he can see them. Ten four. what's your status? Over. Oh my god, Jules, say my name. Not ten, like, oh my god, my status, I, uh, it's not good. Ten eighteen. Ten twenty. over. <laughs> Please just talk to human to me these moments. State your message, sir. Over. I need to report my badge missing. And financial assistance. Okay. Let's do badge first. Ten nine, repeat message. Over. My badge, I can't find it. Basically, it's gone. Ten four, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to ten twenty to the captain. Over. <laughs> is it him? What does he want? Oh my god, he hates me. Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Hey, who is this? This is communication officer Jules Pidieux, sir. Over. No, the other one. You mean your partner? 
Uh, what is he saying? Oh, he's my partner. <coughs> he's asking who you are. I'm his goddamn partner. <laughs> it's your partner, satellite officer Vikmar, sir. Over. Vikmar is my. Oh no, that's John Vikmar. Okay, fine. Did he lose his memory along with his fucking badge? <laughs> who lost his badge? Who the fuck is this guy? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? Oh, Mullen. Thank you. I know my name now. It's Officer Dick Mullen from the best seller, Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen. <laughs> That's my name. And the... Oh, my God. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective <laughs> who would not lose his badge. Am I trying to make myself feel better by saying this? Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Come on, officer. Tell them to stop. This is serious. Ha ha. Officer has lost his badge. Ha ha. Like, I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. Can we just move on? I want to get reported and be done with it. Come on, officer. Tell them that this is serious. He's asking you to stop. Says this is serious. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. <laughs> Satellite officer Vitmar concurs. Losing your badge is serious. Over. Yeah, like, I'm the first cop to ever misplace it. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh my god. Oh god damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. <laughs> Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. <laughs> Jules is trying to, like, be so neutral in, in translating. Mullen dicked us. <laughs> More <than> dick does. <laughs> Ten four, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Okay, we gotta find our badge. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick <laughs> Mullen lost his badge! Why is that such a big deal? What's going on? Oh my god, just more. Super cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? <laughs> his badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. <laughs> okay, we get it, we get it. Could you all please stop saying he lost his badge? Enough with this now, I have other things to discuss. He asked you to please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? <laughs> oh my god. Sergeant Thorson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Oh my god, Jules, you don't need to... Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. Ah, uh, just say no. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. Oh my god, enough with this. The nine come again, I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun too. <laughs> no. Sergeant Dorson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? Oh no. I don't have my gun? Oh god, it's not here. Okay, it's gone. Your gun is most definitely gone. So, that means somebody has it. Come in, officer. You get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. <sighs> I have a chance, I have a chance. Even before no. you can get the words out, everything gets scrambled in your brain. He says he didn't lose his gun, or his fun, whatever that means. Ask him to describe it. His gun. Not his fun. Just the gun will do. <laughs> Satellite officer McLean requests a description oh, no. of your weapon. Over. Am I gonna die? Oh. Request a description, huh? We'll give him one. Describe the plasma gun. For stars, it's massive. Got flared cooling vents along the side and hydrogen flasks sticking out, too. Whisper to the lieutenant. Kim, what are you packing? It's a gun. What can I say? A regular goddamn murder weapon. Look, I don't have it. Okay, let's... Kim, help me. It's a single shot kill A9. An armistice, to be precise. Yeah, it's a single shot. Say it's a kill uh, 9 millimeters armistice. Armistice? What? Is he a fucking... Clearly, he doesn't have his villier anymore. Eh. Dear God, he lost his gun? Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> this isn't really a laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself, but this go here made him piss his pants. <laughs> oh, I, I can't fuck. Oh, no. He lost his 
as soon as he still got his wiener. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. So Kim has a different gun than me. Damn it. I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jules. Ask him. Uh, Sergeant Dorson here is wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Over. I left as mamas after I fucked her ass on night. Tell him that. <laughs> That's a negative. I'm not going to say that. Over. What's he saying? Share oh, with no. the class. He uh he said he sodomized your mother. Wow. The prick ate mama's vanilla waffles at the captain's birthday party. Some nerve he's got. <laughs> <clears throat> sure her vanilla waffles were the only thing he ate? Oh no. Shut up, Jesse. <laughs> this isn't funny. This is my mom we're talking about. Tell him to apologize right now. <clears throat> Sergeant Dorson requested that you apologize for the claims that you made about his mother. Over. It was just bad to her. I thought that's what cops do. Hey, if you don't like the fallout, maybe don't fuck with the firewalker. Do I really make... I don't know. These guys are assholes. We we take a stand. Mac, he says uh, you shouldn't have antagonized the firewalker in the first place. Who? <laughs> Satellite officer V. Firewalker. Um, I'm afraid he might be referring to himself as firewater, sir. Firewater? Firewater? <laughs> you lost it. Fuck it. Tell him to find his goddamn badge and gun. That's the only thing that matters. Yeah, let's be serious. Satellite officer. I heard him and I'm on it. Then for affirmative, officer in pursuit of his firearm. Oh god, I. Uh. Officer, do you need further assistance? Over. Yes, I need a uh, financial assistance. Then for I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but... What does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. Right. Uh, mm. That's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. It is paramount to the investi investigation. He says it's important to the case. He isn't getting a red cent. You can tell him that. Request denied, sir. Yeah, yeah. Over. Alright. Anything else, sir? Uh, okay, then for. Alright, uh, something personal? I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. Okay, what's there to think You're about? You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone you lost your memory. Mm. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. Okay. Then for, sir, I'm not hearing your question. Hold on, are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information about myself. I want to know if you got my badge's description right in your report. Could you read it to me? I'm looking for my address. I don't know where I live. No. Please refer to me with my full name in the future. No. Any news about my uh, family? Have you ever told... If Have I ever told you about my life before? No. Okay, so... One or two... Uh, let's do one first. That's a negative, so I got a 10-12 here. Okay, Over. okay. Uh, let's do this. What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revachonian Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. Hmm. What do you need, sir? Over. Uh... About this. The nine repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Over. Say my name. Stop calling me sir and just use my real goddamn name, Willie. Uh, uh. What? What is it? What can he possibly still want from us? <laughs> he seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. <laughs> Wrap it up. Don't indulge okay. in his drunken antics. Dick, Dick Mullen is probably our name anyway, so I don't really need to know. I don't want to say this. Any news about my own family? I might not even have family, so this would reveal something. Have I ever told you about my life before the RCM? That's, ah, that's a good question. Info, well, that's, uh, does he actually want something, or is he hell-bent on disrupting our work? He asked if he ever told me about his days before joining the RCM. For God's sake, cut this shit out! Tell him to stop wasting time and be a goddamn policeman for a change. Oh my god, this guy. Sir, satellite officer Vickmar says... I heard him. So, um, was there anything else? No. Understood, sir. Over. 
18 kilometers to the south in the 41st mm. Precinct's relay booth, a small crowd has gathered around communication officer Jules Oldboy Pudier, around a dozen cops. <laughs> because of our conversation, they're being entertained. The small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages and her hair trimmed short. What is going on here? Did something happen? How does wait, this is uh, far away, so how am I supposed to be aware that this is happening? What happened is my partner made contact. It's not good. He's lost his badge and his sidearm. He seemed confused, delirious even. Mac, the torso Torson, is finger fucking his fist, laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean, near the entrance. Mm -hmm. oh, am I still on the radio? Is that why? Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fucking drunk to me. Yeah, Max, right. This was some gnarly shit there. I mean, before he started begging for money, it was... Enough! None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. He's a cop. He's one of us, goddamn this. We must help him. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on car juice? He's a lost man. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. The crowd in the room is starting fidgeting uncomfortably. Someone's trying to slip out unnoticed. Mac, man the door. Just you know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. Wow. Damn. That was me? This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain. Or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to pull his shit together. Thank you. I guess I can hold off the report for a few days. Aww. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway. The officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. Okay. All right, let's go. Damn. Oh, good. I can see more. Let's see. Some great tectonic force has cracked the pavement. Oh my God, there's a crack on the ground. Can I sit? The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. <laughs> Let's go. All right, all right. Let's go. There's a random person. What are you doing? Smoking. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. Wow, nice. Nice a simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. I am the law. You sure are, my man. What's going on? It's the jam, my man. Sprawl of lorries with a sweeping gesture. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on mm. strike. Scabs agitating. All around clusterfuck. Okay. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo. For days upon days upon days upon days. Hmm. So long. How, how long have you been out here? Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout, and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. He's a poet. Extravagantly phrased, but I can roll with it. I don't quite understand what you said. Could you say it again? No. It's... Yeah. Imagine. It's been a whole week already. There you go, a whole week. <laughs> Thank you. Behind the laugh, however, a touch of sorrow. Aww. So tell me, what do you need? Care to spare some change for a working stiff? Tell me more about this strike. Know anything about the dead man? What are you hauling away? Tell me about the strike. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. Mm. 
What are they demanding? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Hmm. Ah, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. Okay. What do you think the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. Ka-ching. <laughs> Ka-ching. Anything else? Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Mm. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He tries his best to look nonchalant, but there's a rigidity in him, as if trying to conceal something warm and deep beneath a cool exterior. Hmm. Okay, to spare some change. What do you see in his eyes? Low. <laughs> Give me money. Huh? Oh. No, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. Aww. The bosses, man. First work, then pay. I don't know who these bosses think they are, but that sounds like a good arrangement for them. So you're broke, got it. What else do I have to ask you? Dunno. Uh, what you need? Anything about the dead man? He ain't one of us drivers. Okay, I know that. Okay. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. Mm. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Nice. I am a lie detector. Okay, he's been busy. All right. Uh, what, what, Analyzing what? the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Okay, and what's your conclusion? A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. Okay. <laughs> what are you hauling? Oh, high grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. So are you serious? Time to arrest him. Wait, he just admitted that stuff. You're under arrest. Wait, I've always wanted a friend in the underworld. You're under arrest. Ha! No, I'm joking, my man. Found runs a nice, clean business. This hollow cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. All right, all right. <laughs> they usually get shipped to Grad and the Oxens. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. Can I get one of those tracksuits? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely Aww. hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. So nothing illegal then. That's your machine behind you? This rocking beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. <laughs> you interested in heavy duty cargo machinery? Interested? Not really. I just asked because I don't know. It must be a cop reflex. Yeah, those lorries are pretty neat. Neat. For carrying large quantities of cargo a long distance. These found tracksuits need to find their way to the kids way out in Wamrao and Loran Bird somehow. That's a fun name. Wamrao. There it is again. A little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he spent too long in this lorry. Alright, nothing illegal? Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. Okay. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. That's it. Don't be a stranger. I will be. Bye. Oh, it's an autosave. Thank you. Alright, I'm not gonna talk to you. I did that last playthrough. Although I did get gloves from her. This Postlovantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. Good mail delivery box. Fuck you, mail delivery box. That's it. The box seems happy. <laughs> oh my god. Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the coon. And sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. <laughs> I feel you mail mail collection box. Been there, post La Ventura mailbox collector box, been there. You should man the fuck up. <laughs> I feel you. Been there. Nah, I feel you. The mail collection box seems cathartic. Thankfully even. So do you. You shudder. Then you swallow. <laughs> okay, just leave it alone. Oh my god. Uh, what is this? 
There are bottles. You could pick them up if you had a bag. I don't have a bag. There's so many places. Oh, this is the place I can get medicine, right? right? This book has a rose, a pistol, and half naked dame. How about this book? On the cover stands a very muscular man. How about this book? This book is about pate. This book, you don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. And it's about culture and a book about the future. All right, cool. Um, all right, so that's going to be it for this episode. Um, in the next episode, we are going to have a revenge in the murder scene over there. And let me check my stuff. Yeah, so I got pry bars. How come? How come I have red? I don't know. Oh, because they're unused. Okay. And then here we got to still pay for damages. So we asked our station for additional funds. Our badge, we got to track it down now. Man, track down your gun. Find any information you can on the gun. So we know that somebody shot the mailbox, right? So that's going to be a clue. But in the meantime, we're going to save the game. So see ya. Peace.